I've talked about the four variables and looking at problems from the plastics point of view. I'm going to take a couple of problems and we'll examine them from the plastics point of view. Look at dimensions. I've mentioned dimensions in the past, but let's look at some of the complications that can be involved. The part dimensions are okay both in the length and width dimensions. That's simple. The cavity pressure is too large, if too great, if the part is too big in both dimensions. Let's say the part is uh, okay in the width direction, but wrong in the length direction. It's too, too big. It hasn't shrunk enough. Width shrunk, shrank enough. What's the problem? Well, the molecules would say, you oriented us when you caused us to flow. We were frozen oriented when we cooled, and so we're not shrinking as much as the other guys who were not oriented. What are you going to do? Well, you've got to reduce the orientation in the flow direction. What causes orientation in the flow direction? Well, flow rate, and it's frozen in by cooling rate. You'll change one of those. You don't have to worry about barrel temperatures or back pressures or second stage pressures or timers. The problem is molecular orientation. The solution is to reduce it either by reducing flow rate or increasing mold temperature. The point of this is to go right <coughs> to the problem and then you can go right to the solution. Uh, voids, little holes in the part, in, in thick sections. That's not air bubbles. Uh, I've probably seen two air bubbles in my whole life. Those little holes are voids. They're caused when you have two joining parts of a part and so you end up with a thick section. And that cools the last. And since the plastic must shrink when it cools, and if there's not enough molecules in there, it'll actually pull a void in that part. You'll see those little tiny holes. What's the problem? Ask the molecules. There's not enough of us in here to fill that void. Solution? Put more of us in here. Now, there's another solution here. Sometimes voids in a part are not bad. Sometimes they're good. Let's say that you can sand a sink mark. Well, then cool a part in that area slowly. Let the, that area sink a little bit, and the void will go away. The opposite would occur if you have to have a flat part. You can't stand a sink mark, but you could take a void. OK, cool that area of the part so that the wall becomes uh, stronger, and instead of the sink mark, you get a void. The problem is not enough molecules, but that's, that might be necessary. If you put too, more, too much, too many molecules in a mold, it becomes highly stressed. Now, you might get cracking. Could be cracking any direction of flow or not direction of flow. It's, it's a brittle part. Part can become brittle because you pack the molecules in so tight, they're all saying to each other, move apart, move apart. We're packing here too tight. And that's a pre-stress. And if you put additional stress on it, such as a bending or an impact, the part breaks. So sometimes you have molded parts that they, were, they looked OK. But in use, either a bending or an impact caused them to crack. That's internal stress caused by too many molecules. Well, what we want you to do again, is look at every molded part problem you might have from the plastics point of view, and then solve it from the plastics point of view by using the only adjustments you have, those on a machine. So perhaps we'll do some more examples of part defects later.